Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. The rest of us. The rest of us. The rest of us. Hi and welcome to Tech Wednesday. This is Rob Charney along with Jonathan Charney and this is the day that we're going to talk about all those things tech that you might find interesting. Uh, today I've got uh, a little bit about uh, Windows. Uh, it says that uh, Windows 7 now has overtaken Windows XP in the global share. So um, finally XP has displayed the, uh, displaced the current version of XP with Windows 7. So we had more migration over to Windows 7. So that bodes pretty good for the enterprise. What do you think, John? Yeah, does it say what quarter? Uh, does it give any specifics on when it overtook it? Well, apparently it must be this quarter here. Uh, October statistics show Windows 7's global market share stands at over 41%. So uh, it was just, just this had to be the third quarter then. And so it looks like uh, Windows 7 is coming on strong. It's doing good. I wonder what's going to happen for Windows 8. Okay, well, Windows 8, we don't have a launch date. And, it's um, sometime next year. Other than 2012. Well, yeah, I just meant the overall. If 41% does that, you know, and then they do. It just seems awfully fast. Of course, it took five years for Vista to come out, so. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, you know, and the interesting thing is that Windows 7 is over 10 years old now. I mean Windows XP. Yeah. Woo! Wrong XP. XP. Ten you mean years. What, wrong OS. Yeah. Uh, so so so. Uh, ten years is a pretty damn good run for a uh, for an operating system, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So they I think definitely don't have good. the longevity that some uh, languages do. <laughs> not but uh, I think it's pretty good and I think we're gonna see Windows 7 getting back into more into the enterprise as people get off of XP and I think that'll that'll change uh, Windows 8 that's gonna be interesting to see if there's enough of a reason for the enterprise to switch to it I'm sure that most uh, um, uh, PCs uh, and of course tablets and netbooks will uh, definitely go over to Windows 8 whatever they end up calling it if they keep it at that but I think I'm thinking that they're gonna stick to Windows 8 well, that, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you, you know, they, they may. They're not saying what, but I think we're going to see definitely uh, tablets uh, going into ta into that Windows 8 situation. So, and uh, I'm going to have a second story here about touchpads. I have a couple examples that I'm going to uh, show us. But uh, why uh, why don't we take yours, John? Why don't we talk a little bit about what it is that you want to <coughs> talk today? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, uh, my first one is. Uh it's kind of you know somewhat related to the Fourth Amendment in the U.S. I'm not 100% sure if I would consider it that, but what it is, uh, the story is, is Google is being very open. It's their biannual, what do they call it? It's their biannual record, uh, report of transparency. Uh, basically, it's talking about um, governments and pl places that are asking and demanding that uh, YouTube and uh, Google take down videos. Um, it's actually fairly interesting. This says the demand raised at 70% in takedown requests from the U.S. government over police. I'm assuming that the, the Occupy Wall Street um, has the, you know, stuff like that where the, the U.S. police or, you know, police in foreign countries are asking uh, or demanding that Google take down video that's been put on there by uh, protesters. How has Google... I'm going to be honest, I haven't followed this. How has Google handled the EU's uh, situation uh, and the demand, and, and I don't know what countries you're talking about for the demand of taking down videos. Well, this Do report you? doesn't really say. I mean, one thing it does say is, let's see, and I quote, the demand formed part of the 70% rise in takedown requests from the U.S. government or police and were revealed as part of an effort to highlight online censorship around the world. Figures revealed for the first time shown that the U.S. demand private information about more than 11,000 Google users between January and June of this year, almost equal to the number of requests made by 25 other development countries, I mean, including the U.K. and Russia. And they mentioned Brazil somewhere along with it, but that's really it. And in this story, they don't really particularly give any details in okay. countries. Well, that'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um. <coughs> and I know, uh, I would have been passing yesterday talking about how the, uh, um, you know, I didn't read the story. I just kind of glanced over it, but it was talking about you know how the U.S. is trying to get into more censorship on the internet. Okay. And then you know the second hand, you have another, you know, another one, another well, government uh, person. Um, there's always a, a a group that wants to sit there and demand 
something. So uh, are you saying that uh, the U.S. government is talking about more censorship of the of the Internet? Well, that's what it seems like. I mean, I know you hear if the, you know, if the, the cops are asking you to take down police brutality videos. I mean, I actually don't have a problem with them being up there. And I don't think either should they. If they're on the right, then what's their problem with having it up there? They could at least show, hey, I'm, we're doing our job. This is why. Right. You know, what they need is a better PR person, a social media expert. Instead, they're taking it down, asking that this reflects bad on us when it's having the opposite effect um, that they, they want, at least in my opinion. So what you're saying, according to the article, is that it's that Google is getting requests to take off videos that the government deems uh, not appropriate for their cause? Is that is that basically what it what it's coming down to? It, just, it basically just says... Um, and part of this is it's showing that Google refused the demands from unnamed authority in the first half of the year. But it, it says, um, it, you know, honestly, it's just saying that there's, there's, that, where was that? I, I just read it earlier. It was talking about the government around the world request data. Yeah, basically, it's, it's saying that they just received takedown from the U.S. government or police organizations. Some including that, some include, I'm thinking that's okay. local, state, and federal. At least that's my assumption. Well, I'm wondering if, and I, know I haven't heard, so if anybody out there knows better than we, um, as, as are courts issuing warrants and making requests of companies like Google, YouTube, uh, to remove videos? Is that actually one, happening? One way you do it is, uh, I know by copyright material, you do a DMCA takedown. I'm pretty sure there's a, you can flag the content and it automatically removes the content. You know, it's some sort of algorithm, I think, then you have to. Then you have to talk to them and say, you know, why, you know, why'd you take down my video? Hmm. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we I understand uh, on the video situation when it's copyrighted material that's put there. That I don't have a problem with. I do have a problem with it if this a particular agency within the United States government decides that there's a video there that they don't care for, um, that might make them look bad in a certain light. Then that I. I don't see... Uh, I mean, that's what it seems like. It seems like they're, you know, if cops are using uh, a show of force, you know, whether it's legit or not, you know, that it, it seems like, at least, you know, from my guesstimation of that's what it looks like they're doing. Yeah, well... I mean, I, I honestly don't have a problem with people recording police in the, the course of their duty, as long as the person doesn't interfere. I mean, if the cops, you know, beat somebody down like they did with, um, yeah, what's his name in the early 90s? Rodney King? Yeah, I mean, if they're beating him down like Rodney King for, you know, for, for no reason, you know, being excessive force. No. You know, then, We're a little off the tech talk part of it here, but... No, no, so, I, I, don't, so I, don't what, think that's, I don't think that's off the, the, the tech talk. So I, what I, are we talking about? What is, the, what is the tech story behind this? The tech story is basically telling how Google is uh, basically showing how, the transparency on the governments and agencies that want to take down videos. And uh, countries that want to take down videos. Basically, it's showing this is this is what's happening. It's basically about Google's transparency on takedown requests. Okay, transparency though in what way? Uh, transparency in, in the way that uh, you know that's saying you know like the U.S. government wants us to take this down many videos. Basically, telling the users that th this is what's happening. You know, basically, I think it's Google's way of of saying, hey, we need your help too. You know that you, that. Uh, you know, this is only a safe harbor as long as you guys are willing to defend the content you put up. Okay. I, I, you know, I think that's kind of my thought. Okay. Right. Well, good. Good. That's something. Um, do you want to do yours next, or do you want me to do jump in mine? Um, I can do mine, uh -huh. I, it, my next one, if you want. Why don't you go ahead and do yours? Um, my next one is about, <coughs> excuse me, about Netflix's giant blunder. Um, basically, what happened is Netflix, because they were, for one thing that happened is they, they changed prices. Is this the Quickster thing, too? Yeah, this is the, the combination of things. I mean, right. this is, basically, it's, it, I couldn't find the exact article I wanted, but this one talks about how uh, Net Netflix lost 800,000 subscribers. Um, they went from a profitable quarter, and you know, I guess the last couple of quarters have been extremely profitable, and then they lost, let's see, Netflix had about a total of 23.8 million total U.S. subscribers as of September 30th, 30th down from 24.6 uh, million three months earlier. So basically, between Google, uh, Netflix raising their rates, they really rose instead of having a combination of un you know, unlimited streaming plus DV like one DVD rental. 
you know, hello? <laughs> they made you do, you know, pay $8 for both uh, streaming and net, you know, and, and DVDs, which isn't exactly a bad thing, but I, but I think in this economic time, it was kind of a, a shady move. Well, it wasn't, and my understanding was that they... It's also extremely expensive to ship DVDs. I mean, right. I highly doubt. I bet that was all cost runs. You know? Well, I'm sure with, with a you know with the, what it's costing uh, uh, for postage nowadays, they definitely want to get away from that. Yeah. And so was that the idea between keeping Quickster? Quickster was the download site, or the, the other way around? Quickster was the DVD site. I'm not quite sure if I understand why they wanted to spin it off. Maybe maybe it was a complete spin off and make it a separate company. And hoping that more studios would be willing to stream. I mean, I really don't. I, I really never understood the point of completely spinning off to another company. See, it's so funny. It seems to me that if I was to, to be in charge of of, of naming, naming that, I would have flopped it. I would have called Quickster for quick downloads, and I would have used Netflix for the mail. So they did the just the opposite. But but anyway. Uh, did I not understand? I thought I read an article somewhere about the fact that now they're going to retract this. And yeah, pull it yeah. All back is that what it is? They're no longer they're no longer going to spin off the DVD section of it and just have it you know just basically Netflix, which I think they should have done in the first thing. I think I was so they're going to go day. back to what it was. Well, so. yeah, because they lost eight hundred thousand subscribers. I have a feeling that's voting with your wallet and telling you, hey, we don't like what you're doing. I mean, I think this is the first quarter in a long time that they've had bad. They've had no you know they've actually lost money. Yeah. Yeah, so so the consumer definitely had something to do with this. In other words, we didn't like what you did, Netflix, and here's how we're going to show you. We're going to make you lose 800,000 customers. Good luck getting us back. I'm sure they will, but I and think that I think that's a good... <laughs> That's a good way of showing uh, these corporations and companies that, you know what, as consumers, we, we can't have a voice. And I think the other problem, too, is they really had an issue with, um, I really think the dude, and I read an article that agreed with me, is saying how cocky he was, thinking, you know, he could get away with a lot. And, you know, not only did his customers show it, but, I mean, I, I doubt he's going to be able to get as much content. Right. I mean, there's so, you, renting DVDs, there's so much more content in movies and TV shows you can get over over uh like you know watch it now i mean there's old tv shows i'd love to see on there like combat stuff like that that, that that's not now it's hey, not on there now which i think is a shame there's a whole generation that's missing out on great quality tv shows and that's on netflix hey help this old guy since i'm the old guy tech guy understand hulu mm -hmm. what's what hulu it? <laughs> um it seems to be if i remember correctly i think it's part of, you know like part owners of like you know cbs and bunch of other you know alphabet channels put money into it. it it basically just seems like a place you can watch movies and television shows for free with you know for free no for, is with, it for free is, there, is it no, not well there, there is for free but there's yeah. advertising in. Oh, okay. and there right. is so keep the there is something called hulu plus that i was a, i was a beta user for but i didn't like it because there was there was no con content and everything had advertisement i think what the hulu plus allows you to do is um I think it allows you to view, view back seasons or back episodes. I think they're uh, on newer TV shows. I think Hulu only has up to the latest four. Hmm. Um, well, honestly, let's, let's do this. Let's let's uh, for our next tech talk. Let's look into Hulu a little bit more, so I understand a little bit better, and so that our audience can understand what's the difference between Netflix and Hulu. The well, difference I think, between uh, I think the way to do is be the Amazon Prime member because if you're Amazon Prime. You can actually watch free videos. You can watch free movies, and they actually have a, they have a decent source. Now, uh, Amazon Prime. I'm an Amazon Prime member. Where do I go? Well, I know all, all I know is through the Roku box because that's where I ended up watching so, it. So Roku, Roku, Roku. Box. okay. You know, on that I watched uh, a movie that I don't think that uh, Netflix has. It was in uh, 1959. It was uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth or something like that. Yeah. It was Pat Boone and somebody else. Yeah. It was actually, you know, it, it took me, you know, four times sitting down to actually get to the whole thing, but it was a good movie. I think uh, Prime is a way to go because what is it, fifty bucks a month, uh, a, a year? Oh no, yeah, it's fifty I mean, to why eighty anybody, bucks a year. Yeah, why anybody wouldn't want to be a Prime uh, member of Amazon? Yeah, you, I don't understand. It's, and, and it's you a get, deal. and you get, you get pretty good quality. I mean, it's some of it's, I think it's a, you know, high def down, you know, viewing, and I happen to like it. I mean, it's. Well, let's like, do this. You know what I'd really like to do for our audience is let's make a list of all the video sites where people can get content both free and paid. Legally, I'm assuming. Of, of course, legally. Uh, um, yeah, legally and paid. In our next uh, tech talk, 
uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Let's go ahead and let's talk to them about that and bring that. That's a that's a good one, and I'm and I'm I'm hoping our audience would like to hear it as well as I because I I don't know the difference. I I have the Netflix thanks to you, and uh, we I use that, uh, but that's about it. And um, it's time for me to look at Hulu. And the other thing I'd like to know is um, what's the new music site spot not spotify spotify yeah so we have pandora and spotify right and, and like, rdo and there's a bunch of other ones i don't know rdo but last fm there, let's do this too we should do those too as well because um i think especially with spotify coming it was a european company is my understanding and it was launched in europe and has been there for a number of years that have come over here now and i understand it works different than Pandora, so I'd like to know a little bit more about that as well. So let's put out that on our list to do. I think that I think that's great. So hopefully uh, we can get to you know some of the things that you guys like. Uh, the the main difference between really between Hulu and uh, Netflix is the fact that uh, Hulu like you can only watch uh, through Hulu Plus on devices. Um, like you think you can only watch Hulu on your computer if you want to uh, watch it any content on your uh, I think on your. Um, your tablet or your television or your Roku box, you have to be a, a Hulu Plus subscriber. That's the only way you can watch their content. And you can't get all their content either, which I don't understand. That's interesting. With Netflix, you get everything. Right. At least, you know, they have Watch It Now. Well, good. I, I think that'll be a good one for us. I'd really like to know the difference, and I'd like to bring the difference to our, uh, to our audience because, you, know, you know, us old guys, we don't necessarily know all the new stuff out there it can be awfully confusing and that's why we're here we're hopefully we're going to straighten some things out so i'm going to take my my turn to finish the show out here and uh talk a little bit about uh the tablets um you know we we've got a number of tablets that are available for us out there and uh obviously apple the ipad being the number one uh, is is still my favorite. Uh, I have the classic, not the not the two. But what I did is I took an opportunity, and as I think most of you know, uh, Hewlett Packard, HP put out a tablet called the HP Touch, and I believe I've got the dates, and I'll get to that. But I believe this Touch only lasted uh, six months, maybe less than that, before HP has decided to go ahead and say, you know what, we're not going to do it anymore. And so there's, uh, we're fire deals out there on buy, <laughs> buying these tablets. And, and this tablet is, to my liking, is absolutely gorgeous being an, an, an Apple uh, fanatic for uh, the tablet. It's unbelievable. And if you look at these tablets, look at them, back to back, side to side, I mean, we're talking about almost absolutely identical sizes. The um, HP touchpad's a lot heavier, though. Well, I don't... I, don't, I think it's I heavier. Know. I don't know. It's pretty close. I bet if we were to put it in here, you, you hold it for a second, and you tell me. I, I, I still think the HP... Yeah, I, I still think the HP is a little heavier. Yeah. Maybe. I think that the problem comes down to is, is I think you're going to end up with a dead... Uh, a dead OS with the HP touchpad. I mean, I think the price is a killer price, but I mean, for the same price, you can get a Kindle Fire. You know, I think the problem with the HP, because it uses web OS, right. I mean, I think that's right. the only concern. I mean, right. you're really limited in what you can have. Yeah, you know, it's a shame, but the interesting thing is that HP came out with the uh, web OS update here just, I believe, last week to uh, 3.0.4, which brought in some new functionality, which is just some incredible stuff. I mean, I I was just playing around with one with you right before we started the show where I was able to sync my Android device with the HP Touch and it works like a caller ID. So somebody calls on my phone uh, and I have my phone in my case. If I, ha if I have my pad uh, in front of me, it looks on there and tells me what the caller is. So I thought that was kind of a neat feature. You don't find that in too many, huh? Yeah, I, you know, the, I don't know. I, I I, I like the HP touchpad's amazing. I think part of their thing is HP still trying to figure out what to do with it since they fired their previous CEO, who it seemed had a pretty good roadmap on what he wanted to do with the device. Because rumor was he wanted to put it on everything. Right, and that's and HP actually said that uh, I believe before and Meg Whitman, she's the new CEO again. Well, this, no, this is before they 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 before they hired Leo Apotheker, and they have the the the, the guy who they fired for some sort of scandal. Uh -huh. I think he. He's the one who, who, I guess, wanted to buy it, had an idea of putting it on all their devices. I think they even talked about having it on their, as a second OS, built into the chips on their laptops type of thing. Right. And I think since they, they, they fired him, you know, and I think Leo Apotheker basically said, you know, this is dead. 
we're not going to do anything. Other people can develop it. And, you know, Microsoft used that as a point of saying, hey, if you're a developer for WebOS, we'll give you a free phone. Right. You know, so basically right. I, I think this thing is, is dying, unfortunately. But it's a great device. The OS is... It's fun. It's the, not. The, it's not as snappy or as pretty as my. Uh, well, I think. I, I think the screen iPad, is. The, the screen is nice. I mean, some apps are slower, but I. You know, I, I. I like the OS. It's. It's a pretty snazzy OS. Yeah, it really is. It, and it, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty snappy good. for you too. I think there are a couple of locations where I noticed it was really hesitating, but overall, I think it's a really great device. Believe it or not, did you know you can overclock this? There's a setting to overclock it to speed it up with the new OS. I haven't done it yet, but it says you can if you want. So that's pretty neat. So I got a little bit of statistics for you. It, uh, you know, Microsoft, uh, their big failure was the Kim, right? Kim, yeah. Kim, they were they were shooting for the kids on that one, and that one lasted. Uh, it was on sale for a total of fifty five days. I remember that because the commercials on one day, on the next day they they pulled it from store shelves. Yeah. The problem with that, at least according to the some people I read, was the fact that it required a actual smartphone, smart plan, uh, the data plan. Right. Which is you know like thirty, forty, fifty bucks a month. It, it was too much. It, they were aiming at the kids' market, and in their data plans were too expensive. Yeah. No mm -hmm. parents gonna no parents gonna buy their little you know their 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 kid a device like that requires a thirty, forty extra bucks a month. No, no, it's it's not going to work that way. So the other thing that uh, that that they did here's here's the data on the HP Touch, which is kind of interesting. Huh, I'm kind of moved my mic around. Sorry about that. Uh, on the uh, HP Touch, it went on sale on July one this year, and it ended on August eighteenth. It lasted a whole forty nine days. So if you want to talk about bringing products in and out really fast, it's hard to, hard to argue. Forty nine days. That's pretty bad. I I don't know how you feel about that, but I think that's uh, that's pretty sad. I want to know how much money they lost. I mean, just just by the look of the device and feel. I mean, that's a lot of R and D just to drop, you know, forty nine fifty days later. Oh yeah, what a shame. And I, I what think, a shame that they you did know, that. I'm, I'm hoping. I, you said Meg Whitman's the the person they brought in, right? That's what I thought. Now I'm really I'm hoping. Guy. I'm, I'm really hoping if it is Meg Whitman, Whitman that she decides not to do that. I yeah. have a feeling just because the, the not the, to do what not to kill it, but I I just have a feeling. I but, think it's done. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I think because the the previous guy, and I think when he basically said it's it's no more, I uh, I'd be surprised if anybody makes any, any new apps for him. I think they would be better if they made it a completely open, or you know, sold it to Amazon or somebody. Yeah, it would be nice. And and uh, there was a uh, I was looking up some of the new apps that are available uh, for it. And you know what, guys? There's these HP Touches are still out there, and Christmas is coming. And, and yeah, all right, it's it's going to be an operating system that's not going to be supported uh, down the road, granted. But some of the prices are anywhere from fifty bucks, hundred dollars, to five hundred dollars. Uh, the version I bought, I think, it was the thirty-two gig um, Wi-Fi enabled version, and I think I paid two eighty-five. Well, how much? Wait, how much did you say was the the lowest? They they forty nine dollars. You bid had a whole thing of initially with forty nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars was the was the hot fire sale price that was available for quite I, a while. I still think personally, my first thing would be get an Amazon Kindle or a Kindle. But if you want a tablet, that and if you can't find the the, the Amazon Fire or Flame or whatever the latest and greatest thing is, right. I would pick up one of those. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and it's not fair to. Com I don't think to compare the Kindle at this point. Well, no, they, with, they have that. It, they have that actual. They actually have. They have that. Uh, they have an actual tablet that's using an extremely modified version of Android. I can never remember the the, the actual name of it. It's like the Kindle Flame or Kindle Fire. Yeah. Fu <laughs> yeah, I, I had I, it. I did see one or the other. I thought it was Fire. Fire, but I mean, it, yeah. it's actually it's an actual tablet running. Uh, a modified version, but you know, I think like Apple, it's a, it, it seems like it's completely closed. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think I would go with it, you know, with that or or that. I mean, that's it's a pretty nice device. I mean, the screen's nice. I mean, it, it's no iPad, but I, it's darn near close. It's pretty doggone pretty. I'm, I'll tell I'm, I'm kind of sad to see that it's uh, not that's going away. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame because I really love. It. I've been having fun playing with it. Again, it's not my iPad, but but uh, it's sure damn close and. It seems to me that there is plenty of market for both, but it, it probably came down to. Oh boy, I'm sorry. I keep knocking this mic. Sorry, guys. Um, Grab it near the little nub at the bottom. Yeah, I know. Uh, anyway, so what? Um, it's just a shame. Uh, I think there's plenty of market out there for um, uh, uh, both devices, multiple devices, as we all know. But the one thing I haven't done on on this one yet has been to like read a book or magazine. Um, 
I know that there's a lot of people out there who take the the, uh, the iPad, you know, and they complain about the fact that uh, uh, they, they call it flicker, okay? And let me tell you why I like my iPad so much for books. I don't buy paper books anymore. Sorry, uh, Borders that went out of business. Sorry, Barnes & Nobles. But I've gone entirely electronic now. And one of the things that sold me on the tablet and, and for you folks out there to think about it is as you get older um, you know your eyes don't work as well uh, you don't see as well so um, uh, you might still have to use your reading glasses but you can enlarge uh, with gestures you can enlarge the print size that's very easy the other thing that was the big seller for me is that I no longer needed to have a light on in bed when I'm reading my book a light on so that I could see what I was reading so um, that was my downside to the Kindle. Had the Kindle for a while, uh, but I still had to have a light on, and it, it bothered Paula. This way, it's backlit. I don't bother anybody. Uh, I'm able to read it. So the only downside that I've seen so far, and I don't sit outside a whole lot, but it washes out a little bit out in bright sunlight, just like your, you know, your smartphone will do the same thing. You don't see it as well. But uh, other than that, personally, for me, it's the perfect device. and I, I really like it. And then back to the HP Touch for you guys out there. There's some uh, killer apps that have come out. There's 10 apps for it that just recently came out for it. And I think you're still going to see some developers that have put time into it. Uh, what are you laughing at? A whole 10 apps. Yeah, whoa, 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 I know, I know, I know. Uh, these, these are just the newest ones as of uh, a few days ago. Um, AccuWeather went ahead and put a really nice, nice... I compared the AccuWeather uh, app on my HP Touch compared to the AccuWeather app app on the iPad. I kind of like the one on the HP a little bit better. So they did a nice job with that one. Um, and if, you, if you're in the zombie games, you zombie players out there, After, Aftermath uh, XHD came out. So they did that. Uh, but the other one that all you people that own the HP Touch really need to take advantage of is called Box. And th they haven't touted it much, but um, new touch, and I'll read it to you, the, the new touchpad owners may not be aware that HP made arrangements with the Box.net folks to provide all touchpad buyers with a free 50 gigabyte cloud storage account for life. Free 50 gigabytes for life. <laughs> so uh, if you have an HP Touch and you haven't taken advantage of that, uh, my recommendation is you do that right away because I don't know if this agreement's going to last, you know, how long it's going to last or not last, but 50 gigabytes uh, for storage for free for life for free is probably the best deal out there yet. It will more than pay for what you paid for for the uh, IP Touch. Um, if you're a, a Star Trek fan, they have a, a neat little uh, application that makes your iPad Touch kind of look like the Star Trek Enterprise screens. You mean the L cars menu? L yep, the L, L cars clock. They're calling it in this case, and uh, it's a, it's a clock, and it it puts on all the uh, uh, Enterprise or or uh, any of those type of things. So if, you, if you're a Star Trek fan, that's kind of a neat app. Uh, there's a neat Google reader called Nom Nom Nom. I don't know where these names come from, but that's that's a, supposed to be a really good uh, Google reader for RSS feeds. So that's good. Uh, there's a Podcatcher Deluxe, and I haven't looked into that one, but I'm assuming it's a player for podcasts. I don't know about vidcasts like we're doing. But I believe that it does that. Uh, it's got an, a Rev3 uh, for video playing. A Spaz HD, which is a Twitter app, which they say is really, really good. Uh, and um, another company come out, cam had to come out with Touch Feeds, which is another Google reader. And of course, if you're a fan of Twit, like we all are, if you're into technology at all, you've got to be a Twit fan. Um, they have a great app for that, too. So uh, apps are still being written. Um, all three of them. All three of them. All ten of them. I don't know how many. And yes, as time goes on, because it's not going to be a supported OS, they're going to go away. But uh, I give a thumbs up to the iPad Touch. I'm sad that it's went away. Um, maybe they'll work on it some more. I don't know. I have I no so. way of knowing, but it would be nice. So Or sell it to somebody who will. Or, well, and I'm sure that's it's a valuable property. I don't remember how much HP paid for it. but I a still lot. Believe, Yeah, I still believe it's probably got a lot of value out there. Because the reality is, you know, the longer I play with, uh, with this HP Touch, the, the more I work with it, um, it's actually pretty, pretty nice. Like I said, it's not an iPad killer by no means, but for the price, it's a heck of a 
think of a tablet. So think about it for Christmas gifts out there. You know, the grandkids might like something like that. And it's going to run you a whole lot. And uh, I, I can't knock the Kindles either. They're a good product. Amazon does a heck of a job with that. So that's it for me. Uh, this is Rob Charney and John Charney on Tech Wednesday. I want to thank you very much for listening to us. And we'll see you soon.